Hey everyone, I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to set up LiveLink between Unreal and Maya. So LiveLink is a tool that allows you to stream animation data from an external package like Maya or Motion Builder over into Unreal onto like a skeletal mesh or an, or an object. Uh, it's very useful for motion capture or previs or just kind of streaming data through to see if an animation is working um, quite nicely. There's a lot of, lot of uses for it, but its primary function is for virtual production. Um, so I'm going to show you exactly how it's set it up inside of Unreal 5 today. Um, I'm going to be using Maya 2022. Um, so let's get started. So inside of Unreal, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is make sure that the Live Link plugin is enabled. So if you go to settings at the top right, head down to plugins, and it'll bring open this tab. And in the top right, you can just search for Live Link. Um, so you can see I've got Live Link version 2.0 here. Um, I've already got it enabled, uh, but make sure you enable that and restart your editor. You'll get a little warning in the bottom corner, but make sure you fully reboot and then it can be enabled and used. So once that's there, you can go back to your level and at the top, if you hit window, uh, you will now have a virtual production uh, slot here and you've got a live link section. And you open this window and this is the window for connecting um, Unreal to outside applications. Uh, so we're gonna need to get it set up inside of Maya in this tutorial. I will do another tutorial on Motion Builder. Uh, but to do this, all we need to do is start by going to the Epic Games launcher and head to the marketplace. Uh, we're gonna need to download an external tool that we'll need to install into Maya so we can get the two applications communicating. So if you open this and just type live link in the search bar, all one word, and you'll see that there is two products here. So there's Maya Live Link and Motion, live, motion Builder Live Link. We're gonna use Mo Maya Live Link for now. If you open up this and add this to your basket and purchase it, add it to your account, kind of usual for marketplace equipment and click install to the engine. Um, I've already got it installed, so I can't do it again. But once that's downloaded, you wanna head to your Explorer and you wanna go to your P, uh, your program files. So I'll just drag that over here. Um, so we need to get the file that we've just downloaded from the marketplace and put it into Maya. So it's located in program files, uh, Epic Games Launcher, the engine version you downloaded it into. Um, in this instance, I did actually download it into 426. You wanna to go to engine, plugins, marketplace just here, and you've got Maya Live Link there. So if you pop into there, and then you've got binaries, and then in here we've got uh, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. Um, so I'm using uh, Maya 2022, but Maya 20 works with it. Um, so if you just go into there, basically pick the version that's your Maya year or the closest to it. Copy these files out. Now head back up the chain to your program files again. Head into the Autodesk folder this time. Go to Maya, Bin, Plugins, and then paste those assets into there. So I've already got them pasted in there, so I won't, uh, I won't repaste them. I'll just cancel that off. But then restart your Maya and uh, get it open. So now we have to enable the tools on the Maya side. So we've got Maya here. And uh, you wanna start off by actually enabling the plugin in the software. So you head to Windows at the top, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. You wanna type Live Link into the search bar and then you've got two plugins you wanna make sure are enabled. So you want Maya Live Link Plugin 2022.mml loaded and auto-loaded, and mayalivelinkui.py loaded and auto-loaded. So you can close that. Now to open the interface inside of Maya, you have to type the command into the mel uh, command line at the bottom. So you can type Maya Live Link UI. so that's camel case with the M, the L, the L, and capital UI, and hit enter, and it'll open up the Maya Live Link UI. Now, it is a bit tedious, you will have to uh, retype that every time you open up and close the UI. One thing you can do to make your life a little bit easier is if you open up the script editor, open up a mel tab and do the Maya Live Link UI command in there. If you select all of that text and middle mouse drag it up to your shelf, it can drop it in as a script that you can call at any time. So you can click that, it pops open the tool and it's very easy and accessible. You can right click on that script, click edit 
and open up the shelves tab and you can customize a few things that'll make it a little bit more readable. Uh, so your icon label down here, you can type uh, the name if you wanna keep it, give it a name or a label, call it LL or Unreal Link, um, whatever, whatever's, whatever's best for you. I'm just gonna stick with Live Link. Oh, Live Link. Uh, on the icon name, you can press the M on the side and change the little icon that appears. Um, I'll just stick with maybe a HIK character. There's a full body one, select that. And save all shelves. And now you can see we've got a nice little accessible button always there whenever we want. Okay, so now we've got Unreal set up and we've got Maya set up. We now need to connect the two together. So you can see here, there's no connection. Now, if we head back over to Unreal, still in the live link tab, we can click source message bus source and you can see the Maya live link has just popped into existence so if we hit OK on that and now you can see we've got we've got a connection coming through so we're not streaming any data yet but one way to check if the data is coming through properly is to open up a skeletal mesh so if we head back to my content browser and um, pop into the skeletons folder and we'll open up the, the mannequin skeleton so on the right hand side here, we've got the uh, preview scene settings and under animation preview controller, where you can customize like a preview animation, there should be a new option called live link preview controller. So if you turn that on, there's a quick checkbox we can uh, enable to test called enable camera sync. If we hit that on, the camera should sync with Maya from now on. So if I just drag this character over here and drag this here, Oh, drag that there. Now you should see Unreal matches exactly what I do. Next up, let's get the character syncing. So if we open up the skeletal mesh for the SK mannequin, we see we still got the sync on. If I enable skeletal view, you'll notice if I move the character, they're not matching. The, the bone data is not being transferred. And this is because we aren't syncing the character. What we need to do is open up the world outliner and hit the root of the character. And inside of the Maya Live Link UI, we can add a selection. So we can add the root and we'll give it a name. So this is the name to uh, correspond between Unreal and Maya. So let's call him Mannequin. And we want to make sure it's the full hierarchy. And that's it from this side. On the Unreal side, you'll notice just above that camera sync checkbox, we have live link subject name. So inside that subject name, if we put in mannequin, it'll start streaming data through. And if I turn off the camera sync, just so we can pull back a little bit. So if we start rotating arms and stuff, you can see that the data is now streaming through in real time, which is really cool. However, you may have noticed that the character did roll over. This is because the hierarchies aren't matching exactly between Unreal and Maya. So in uh, Unreal, you'll notice the root is the tip, uh, is, is the root of the hierarchy. Whereas inside of um, Maya, we've got this uh, group above the root, which has a minus 90 on. So this kind of happens when you export out from Unreal, it, it groups everything together. But what we can do is if we just select those two, unparent them, delete that group, and you'll notice now the match is exact. And there we go. And there's the data. Data is all rolling through, perfectly matched, which is brilliant. But this um, is only half the battle because we've only got it streaming into the previewer. What if we wanted it streaming into the level? So to do this, we're gonna need an animation blueprint that's set up for live link. So if we head back into the content browser, go to uh, your blueprints folder or wherever you're going to uh, uh, make the file located, right click animation, animation blueprint, and we'll make that a animation uh, for the mannequin. Call this ABP live link and pop that open. So live link offers a animation node called a live link node. It's very simple to set up. It's very similar to what we've just done. But if you just right click type live link pose and you'll get this node here, plug that directly into the outpos and put the same name that we did as before into there and hit compile. Now, if we drag this preview to the side, you see it's still streaming over. Awesome. 
So one thing you may know is that the input pose was visible but ignored. This can be quite annoying in any output logs or things you've got. So one thing we can quickly do is if we just put a, a local space ref pose, which is basically the bind pose of the character. If we just plug that straight into there and hit compile, it'll get rid of that little note. And that's it for streaming onto a character. So we can drag that character straight into um, a level. Let's make him nice and zeroed out. If we just hit uh, play, I've got a game mode on, so let me just eject, fly out. And if I just put it to the side and move the character. And now you can see the whole character is fully streaming through and it's all nice and dandy. So you can, as you can imagine, this is amazing for things like motion capture shoots. If you want to stream uh, the raw data from uh, Maya or Motion Builder in through live, you can get the characters with some nice materials, some nice lighting. Um, you can get cloth running or dynamics on them, and it's all previewed. And it kind of it it brings the world to life and kind of allows the actor to kind of see themselves on screen. It's invaluable. I've done it many times on shoots. Um, but it's really cool, um, but it's not limited to that. There's a lot of possibilities and it's important to note that it, this isn't limited to characters. Although this demonstration was on a character, it works on anything that has a joint hierarchy. Um, you can sync through cameras and um, field of views and things like that. Um, there's a lot that can be done with it and it's really powerful and really cool. Um, I will do another tutorial on the motion builder side. It's it's basically the same tutorial except this kind of the, the UI interface on, on the motion builder side is slightly different, um, but it's it's pretty much the same process and the Unreal side is exactly the same. So guys, if you've got any questions, uh, drop a comment or message me on Twitter, Matt Lake TA. Um, I hope that was helpful and I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.